we've made, made th certain things easier, right? There's so much content out there. There's so much math content out there. Like if I'm like, oh, you know, I've got some standard I want to teach. I can go to common core sheets and like look up like, I don't know, something on multiplication and like all these different like worksheets, like multiplying multiples of 10 and then clicking this worksheet. I mean, there's all this stuff that I can do. Like I can select the worksheet. Oh, look, I can download the worksheet. I can like save the worksheet. I can like put the worksheet in the skies, import it. But then like, again, I'm doing this very fast. So th this isn't like a, you know, I'm just, I'm just pointing out that you can put worksheets in the skies like fairly easily and it's got the key. But then now it's like, oh, just to do a multiplication worksheet, I've got to like chunk this, right? I got to go like, you know, this and this and this. And like for something like simple, like multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, is there a way I can just make those questions without having to find a worksheet and chunk it? And this is an old feature. This is a feature we introduced last month, but I know not everyone's using it. So I wanted to go through what math generators are. So what math generators are, it's a way to easily make addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division problems for K through five. I think LAUSD even said, you know, during the pandemic time, if your students learn nothing else this year, make sure they know arithmetic. You know, everything else we can learn later, but you, you gotta know like, you know, how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So we were like, okay, it's a good time to make those generators. And what we tried to do was to make sure everything was aligned to common core because there's a lot of these sort of like quizzes and generators and things online, but sometimes you want something very specific that's aligned to a specific standard. And it's kind of hard to get it to work that way. Well, we tried to make it easy to work that way. So let me give you some examples. Here's the kinder standard. Fluently add and subtract within five. Okay, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna click generator, make quiz card generator. And I'm gonna say, I wanna do addition problems within five. So all I'm gonna say is I want five questions. The first number should be between one and five. The second number should be between one and five and the sum should be less than five. I'm gonna click make cards. And now you've got a bunch of addition problems that are within five. And your students can go ahead and answer that right away. Oh, add and subtract within 10, you can do the exact same thing, just within 10. Okay, first grade, first grade. Add within 100, including adding a two digit number and a one digit number. Oh. I wanna make addition problems involving a two digit number and a one digit number. Can I do that? Same thing, add within. So the first number should be two digits. So 10 through 99. The second number should be one digit, one through nine. And the sum should be less than 100. And let's just go ahead and make like five questions. Um, you can specify whether or not it needs regrouping. Yeah. Mm. I, th I think sometimes is okay, but you can say all, all the time or never. You can say that. And then, yeah, again, you got two digits plus one digit, two digits plus one digit. It always puts the easier ones first, the ones that don't require regrouping, it puts those first so that your students won't get like, like oh, this is too hard. Uh, but then it puts all the harder ones that need regrouping near the end. So it's very, uh, very teacher friendly. A two digit number and a multiple of 10. Oh, how can I do that? a two digit number and a multiple of 10. So a two digit number and a multiple of 10. Oh, the second number has to be a multiple of 10. Some less than 100. Let's make four questions. So it's like a big form that you fill out, but we've accounted for all the possibilities that Common Core would ask for. Okay, yeah, it's got a, two, it's got a multiple of 10 that you're adding it to. And then all this stuff, 10 more, 10 less, multiples of 10 to multiples of 10, all of this is possible with the generator. Okay, second grade, add and subtract within 100. Okay, let's do a generator again, but this time we'll say subtraction. I want it to be within 100. So again, 10 minus 99, 10 minus 99. 
But let's say I do not want it to have any sort of regrouping, no regrouping. I can make five cards that will have no regrouping. So when your students are learning how to do the subtraction for the first time, they don't have to do any of this regrouping or borrowing or whatever. It'll be easy for them. And if I'm like, oh, okay, this is too easy. I want to make math problems where you need regrouping. You can go ahead and run the exact same generator again. Subtract. But this time I'm going to say, okay, we do require regrouping and I'm only going to have five questions. Um, oh, and this time I want students to show their work. Yeah, that would be nice if they could show their work. So here we go. And you'll notice every single problem here requires regrouping now. And there's this little teacher control panel already set in place so your students can show exactly how they're doing the borrowing or whatever they call it now. <laughs> um, all okay. Are we on time? Okay, plenty of time. Good. On the third grade, fluently multiply within 100. Oh my gosh. We used to like, we used to recommend people use extra math. And extra math is a fine program, but you have to download a whole nother set of like emails and usernames and passwords and have this app. And sometimes the app is like, needs, anyway, like, so something like times tables, why can't we just build it within skies? So yeah, it's in skies now. Let's say you want them to practice like the twos times tables. Easy. You say the second number has to be between two and two. 10 questions. And now we have all the multiplication problems by two. That's it, the two times tables are right here. You'll notice we have 10 questions and it doesn't repeat itself. It knows not to repeat itself, right? It just randomly scrambles it. So now every day you can be like, okay, we're gonna do the three times tables, four times tables. Or maybe you're like, okay, they should know all their times tables up to five. I'm gonna delete this. Yeah, I know times tables are like, yeah, maybe it should be between one and five and one and five. And then now you're gonna have times tables where everything is within five. They should be able to do this. It's just 12 numbers, five times five divided by two. If they know everything up to five, then you know, you can start getting into more complicated stuff later. But with, with these generators in place, there's no reason your students shouldn't be able to just know their times tables by the end of the year. Um, well, unless they're like in like second or first or kinder or something like that. Um, but even then, maybe you know, give it a try. Fourth grade, a whole number of up to four digits by a one digit whole number. Okay, let's see. Multiply, whole number of up to four digits. So let's say we want the first number to be between like 1,000 and 9,999, and the second number to be between one and nine. Again, it just makes those problems for you. So you don't have to hunt around for these multiplication worksheets. Um, it's, all, it's all just here. So I'm gonna go ahead and Remove these now. And then the last thing I'm going to show is division. And all of these cards here are things that the generators can do, all of the relevant standards. OK, whole number quotients and whole numbers with up to four digit dividends and two digit divisors. Whoa, OK. Quiz card, generator, let's do division. So the first one's going to be four digits, 100 to 999. Okay, that's actually three digits. So let's make this bigger. And then the second one should be between, let's say 11 to 99. And this time I wanna make it so there's no remainders. You can make it have a remainder, but let's say no remainders. Um, you can determine whether or not it's got a zero in the quotient because that's another common core thing. But we'll say sometimes, we'll say vertical. And now you've got all of these things where everything should work out evenly. Um, check. Let's try this. <laughs> 13, 1, 1, 3, 52. Oh, gosh. 4, 12, 1. Okay, see, it works. And then 140. 
So no remainder, no remainder. Our, our thing actually worked. And your students can be submitting stuff like this with their generator. And then you can go ahead and grade it, put it into Schoology or Google Classroom or whatnot. And so that's it. Um, so overall, it's now 3.40. Um, pretty much today I covered Chunker and Generator. If nothing else, the one take home lesson, or I hope the one take home thought I'd like to leave everyone with today is just the idea of breaking things down into small chunks. Every card, one problem, every card, one problem. It makes grading easier, makes feedback easier. It makes assessing where your students are at easier, makes differentiation easier. It just makes everything better, more interactive. Uh, more engaging for your students, better participation. Everything uh, happens when you're breaking things down into these easy to uh, work with chunks. Okay, uh, that's it. And, and James will now talk about how we're gonna set up the breakout rooms.